The things that he's found over his many years is that when he is actually hungry, yeah. he is more tuned in and he does a yeah. better job of understanding what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Like the yeah. first time I actually started experimenting with fasting or even a calorie restricted ketogenic diet, I took a walk around my neighborhood at the time. And it's like my whole nostrils opened up. I could smell things. I could mm. hear things. I was more lucid in ways I had not been before. Uh, and I even fasted for seven days and was able to, you know, give a lecture and train in the gym and lift weights that were not hardly much lower than what I typically do. So I probably couldn't do, you know, it was just at seven day p point after no calories. I was starting no calories to feel at all. No calories after seven days. Just yeah, water? Just water and some, uh, like, uh, a bullion cube. So some electrolytes like sodium, potassium, and lots of water. And I allow myself uh, about a third of the coffee that I would typically drink. So I'd have a small cup of coffee in the morning. And I got a ton of stuff done during that week. Like I had, you know, because I didn't have to to make my food. I didn't have to clean up my food. I didn't have time eating you know, the food. So How I saved a lot of time. Uh, I think I lost eight to nine pounds and then within a week or two, it, it, it all came back again. You know, a lot of it's, right, you're water. holding glycogen and, and you lose glycogen. But, uh, in regards to, you know, at the time, uh, like my deadlift strength was maybe eight reps for eight or 10 reps with like 565. And I was able to do 10 easy reps with five plates on each side, which is about 500, uh, and, you know, typically going into this, I was paranoid when I was, you know, I followed, I, I listened to Dorian Yates' podcast and I was a huge follower of Dorian Yates in 1994 and I was eating. So I was eating four to six meals a day with shakes in between. And I remember even having like uh, nightmares. I would wake up in the middle of the nightmare. Like the nightmare would be, I didn't have like food on me after two hours. Like I would have to eat like every two. I was so obsessed with getting bigger and stronger. And so for me to fast seven days and to be out of my comfort zone, that was like a big step for me. So I kind of just did it to mentally liberate myself from chronic overfeeding <laughs> and things. And because I, was, I had just read and studied George Cahill and the Harvard Medical School study where they fasted for 40 days mm -hmm. and looking at you know, all the parameters on that. And I was like, it's not going to kill me. It's probably going to do me well. And uh, the more I did it, the second and third day were, were kind of hard for me. But after like the fifth day, it became, it was bizarre. It became like really easy. And I was just kind of like floating around, like, like my body had no inflammation. Uh, I wasn't buzzing like with energy, but I was very lucid and I didn't feel like I needed to be buzzed. Like I, I realized I'm so much better. A lot of times I feel like I need to drink coffee to amp up to be my best, mm -hmm. but I was my best when my brain was really calm and I was able to put thoughts together and I wrote a whole lot of uh, research proposals, which later became funded, you know, and I got probably of the proposals I really worked on, I probably got over a million dollars of funding during that time. I really intensely worked on, on various proposals because I just transitioned to like a tenure track position. So it allowed me to work on manuscripts and proposals and just put thoughts together that maybe I otherwise either wouldn't have the time to or the mental kind of resources to get into that that seems state so counterintuitive that you have it more does. mental resources with less calories it does i mean you know i was burning my body fat for fuel primarily probably lost a little bit of muscle but that fuel that fat was becoming ketones and that my brain had switched over i was doing low carb but not really full full keto at the time uh but it really it like quieted my brain in a way that i was able to uh Really, maybe I have like mild, you know, ADHD because I like to do so many different things, but it quieted my mind and I was able to wake up like every morning I was waking up a lot earlier than normal, like 435 and I typically sleep till like seven, but I was able to like wake up and just focus and get a ton of work done the first three or four hours. And then, then I would go into work actually and just, you know, meet with my students or teach or do whatever I had to do. But I just remember getting a ton of work done. During that period, I've never reproduced it. I never went back. and But I did a whole bunch of, of blood work on me to give, you know, a little bit of insight at, as to what's going on during, uh, during the fasting stage. And everything was really positive. You know, there was a big, uh, my insulin was really low at the time. My glucose was really low. I got down to like 25 at one point because I was experimenting with a couple different things. And my ketones were really high my ketones were like double what my glucose was at a couple time points during mm. that 
So it's an issue. I would, I would encourage people, especially maybe people that are prone to cancer or people who have had cancer in the past and maybe had treated and are kind of in a state of remission. Uh, if you go, if you get your body into that, what we call the metabolic zone, where the level of ketones are higher than the level of glucose, that puts tremendous metabolic stress on cancer cells or precancer cells that have uh, a huge appetite for glucose. So, and that contribute can can initiate autophagy. So, so even people who do not have cancer, but yeah. perhaps you know want to just make sure they're holding off of it as a preventative maintenance. Yep. And I think it can stimulate, almost purge your body of cancer cells that are weakened by in this fasted state and also precancerous cells that may be in the transition of, trans, you know, de-differentiating into this, you know, cancer-like cell. It, these cells are very energy demanding, especially if they're replicating. And if you deprive them of energy, the quote-unquote energy crisis signal that these cells receive can, can initiate uh, program cell death, uh, we call apoptosis and autophagy. And that's the benefit of this. It's almost like housekeeping. So think about it, you know, you accumulate a lot of, you know, dead cells that are kind of sluggish, your mitochondria are kind of sluggish, and then you fast for a week and it's like reboot. It's like uh, setting, it's like a reset button. 